I'm Clara Rose, and this is Influence Matters, the show where each week I share tips, tricks, tools, resources, hacks, whatever you want to call them, to help savvy influence builders just like you to strategically and intentionally cultivate influence. Welcome to today's show. I am going to, of course, start out by saying thank you, thank you to the people who make this show possible. So first of all, our sponsor, which is Rosedale Publishing, thank you so much for being our show sponsor. They specialize in books for professionals and entrepreneurs. So if you are looking to have a book done, you can contact Rosedale Publishing and say, hey, Clara sent you. And then, of course... The fine folks over at Tampa Bay Multimedia and WeBeam TV, where we are today, for making the show possible. Thank you. Okay, so today is an exciting show for me. It's a subject that's newer, but something that I'm super excited about. And of course, we're going to start out with a question from one of our viewers, just like you. And she sent this in and asked, I'm assuming it's a she, because it sounded like a she to me. It seems everywhere I look, someone is doing a challenge. Is this something that I should be considering as well? Signed, newbie influencer. So, I probably shouldn't have assumed that our newbie influencer was female. I don't know why I assigned that to our newbie, but absolutely, let's talk about challenges and what they might mean for you as a new influencer, or if you've been around for a while and you're already an established influencer, what it could do for you as well. Okay, let's hop into this topic. Let's start by defining what a challenge is. So you might say, I don't know what you're talking about, Clara. So let's talk about what that is. I'm talking about a social media challenge or a challenge that you put out on social media to advertise for at least. And it's an event that offers specific knowledge or transformation for your participant. It's usually a low or no cost opportunity for them to learn something and engage with an expert. So absolutely a challenge must offer some value to them. You're not going to attract people. So my question to you is, have you participated in a challenge? I personally participated in a few challenges recently. I have participated in a five-day challenge that was specific to LinkedIn, a three-day challenge that was on a different topic entirely, and then one that I was interested in that was a seven-day challenge. That one was, that was tough because it was seven full days in a row. But the interest in them was because they were a topic that interested me, something that I thought, oh, I'd like to learn more about that from this person who looks like an expert. So some of them were free and some of them I actually paid to participate in, but they all offered me value and some of them in surprising ways. So that's just my question to you. Have you participated in a challenge? It, obviously, newbie influencer, you're saying, I'm seeing them. Should I do this as well? So first I'm going to say, if you haven't participate in one, see what it's like. I'm always a big advocate of Put your hand into your pocket and pull out a few bucks and participate. See what it's like for you as the end user, the experiencer of the challenge, because you're going to learn a lot. Not just about challenges, of course, about anything that you'd like to learn more about. Take a little bit of money and go find out about it. Of course, some of the challenges I did were free, but they still offered great value as a participant. So today, I want to just talk a little bit about 
the strategy behind having a challenge. And then you can decide for yourself if a challenge is for you because it's a lot of work. So let's have a look first at the strategy of a challenge. What do I mean by the strategy of a challenge? Why would we do a challenge? Well, here's why I would do a challenge. It helps to create visibility helps to create visibility for your business, your brand, whoever you are, right? Also, it invites engagement. Engagement between your potential client and yourself, but also engagement between the participants, which adds value. And then, of course, it's all about offering guidance. Nobody's going to show up to participate in your challenge if there isn't some end result for them, something that they're going to gain. So we're going to break this strategy down for you one piece at a time, just so that you can decide for yourself if this is something that will work for you. Of course, there's more value than we're going to talk about today, but you probably aren't surprised that I'm talking strategy, right? There's got to be a reason behind doing the challenge. I'm not going to say newbie influencer, just go chal do challenges just because. Because unless you have an end desired result, I think you could be wasting your time. So let's talk through the strategy one piece at a time, just as a starting point for you. Okay, let's look at the first piece, which is creating visibility. So one of the goals, of course, for you is to create more vis visibility for yourself. Plus, it's an opportunity to write, speak, and lead your ideal client, right? You should be so excited about that. You should be jumping up and down, at least on the inside, because don't we say that every, every single week? Right, speak, lead. Right, speak, lead, right? <laughs> because influence matters. So here I'm telling you that this is going to create some visibility, an opportunity for you to write, speak, and lead your ideal client, right? They're not your client yet. But this is a great opportunity to get their attention. And this is... For them, absolutely a no cost or a low cost, low barrier to entry for your participant, right? It's the ability to interact with you on a really safe level, right? A few dollars or some of their time or perhaps both, but they have the ability to work with you and maybe measure or gauge a level of interest in, in working with you further, deeper, whatever you want to call it, right? Do you have a, a service that you're selling, a product that you're selling? Use this as a stepping stone for them to get to know you. So that's why I say that it's a low barrier to entry. A few bucks, a little bit of time. Okay, I have a savvy tip for you. You, of course, don't have to call it a challenge. Some people are like, oh, it's so overused. I don't want to call it a challenge. You don't have to. You can call it something else. Get creative with the name if you'd like. I'm going to call it a challenge because it's currently what people are calling them. <sighs> if somebody comes up with something that's more clever, I might adopt that too. So I'll be watching to see what you come up with. Okay, let's move on to our second point. Oh, hold on. We haven't tweeted yet. Let's stop and do a savvy tweet, shall we? So hop on over. You can always find me at Claire Rose Chat on Twitter or anywhere, really. Good, bad, or ugly, visibility creates influence. Be strategic and intentional about it, what it looks like for your brand. Yikes. Visibility creates influence. Good, bad, or ugly, I'm telling you. Not all, good pre all press is good press. I know they say that it's true, but... I disagree with them. Okay, let's move on to the next point before we run out of time today. All right, number two, what was that? That was to invite them to engage or engagement. So authentic communication is going to build trust with your participants. Plus, they have the added benefit of exposure too. Engagement builds trust. Okay, this is an important piece of the mix. You want them to trust you, right? But you also want them to engage with others in the group because it gives them some added exposure. Now, why do you care about their added exposure? Well, let me tell you why. Because that's value to them. And didn't we say at the very beginning, if there's not value, people aren't going to show up? So it can't just be about you. 
can't just be about what you're teaching them. There's got to be real value. And I can say from personal experience, there was a lot of value in all the stuff that I did in September. I was in several challenges, some summits, some conferences. I did lots of stuff. And part of that value for me, including the challenges, was the exposure that I got to other influencers and other people. So people got to see my face, hear my name, engage and interact with me, see me engage and interact with the host. Lots of value outside of just what I was there to learn. So something to keep in mind as you're looking at your strategy for doing a challenge. Okay, and then of course, I don't want to forget to give you your savvy tip. So my savvy tip on this is plan exercises to encourage interaction between participants because everyone wins. This is a really great example of one that I was recently in that I really liked. It was on Zoom, and they broke us out into little groups. So they decided who went. It was a pretty large group. There was 150 of us, I think. They broke us out into different groups each time. So each time you went out to a... I can't even remember what they called it, but one of these groups, they gave you a topic to speak about while you were in the group and you had 10 or 15 minutes. So you got to pop in, say who you are and what you do briefly, and then answer the question or whatever it was they asked you to do. Now, I got to see a bunch, not all, of the different 150 participants, right? Because that's a lot of participants. It was a three-day event. So I didn't get to meet all of them, but we had an exercise that needed to happen whilst we were in there in the little group. Plus, we got to say who we are. So there was some interaction, and it made some great just surface relationships. And what are we always saying about relationships? The value of building the relationship is that organically generates leads, right? For your business, ministry, cause, brand, right? You've probably heard me say that a hundred times. So that's an important piece. As you're planning, make sure that you're getting them to interact with each other and you're encouraging it in some way. Okay, let's move on to the next point. Oh, shoot, I keep forgetting to do my tweets. I have to give you a tweet first between each one. All right, let's hop on over to Twitter once more and do a savvy tweet. Social media engagement is gold, but not all engagement is good for your brand. Be intentional. Hmm, some wise words. I, yikes, have seen a lot of social media engagement recently with all this stuff that's going on that was not good for people's brands. I see people unfriending each other and blocking each other and unliking each other and all those, unfollowing each other over differences of opinion that aren't necessarily good for your brand. So just be careful. That's just my words of wisdom to you. Okay, let's move on to something important. Okay, let's talk about that really important piece, that final piece, which is your offer. So what are you going to offer them? What guidance are you going to give them? The true value for your participants is a proven system or a process or a strategy or something that they gain from participating. So franchises, roadmaps, guides, blueprints, those all worked when they're followed. So if you don't believe that, just look around at all of the franchises, the fast food restaurants. Why are they successful? It's because they have the guidance that ensures results. Right? They have a proven system to follow, so they follow it and they get results. They're not actually allowed to stray from the formula that makes it successful. That's why people buy them, though, buy into franchises because it's a proven system in place. So anytime you can offer a proven system, a proven step-by-step -step or a guide or something that ensures some hand-holding and some guarantee that, hey, you are going to actually have the end result, the transformation, whatever it is that you're in your challenge you're trying to offer, it's step by step, hold my hand, show me how to do this. That's why they're there. They're, they're there specifically for that value. And of course, I don't want to move on yet without sharing our savvy tip with you, which is this on this particular point. The power of the challenge is the real knowledge or transformation for the participants. So it's not about you, it's about the transformation or the knowledge that you impart for your participants. 
So that seems like a no-brainer, and we've kind of touched on a little bit, but these savvy tips or pro tips are just to bring home that point. Make sure that you are setting up a challenge with your participants in mind, remembering, of course, that it's not really about you. <laughs> okay, I want to talk briefly before we move on to the next slide about one of the challenges that I was recently in that I found a lot of value in. It was a three-day challenge that gave me an opportunity to interact with my peers in, on Facebook. So it was a private group, which I thought was interesting, but it was more interesting that it was a temporary private group. Lots of groups are out there you can participate in, but this particular one was private and temporary. So it meant for the challenge, all the activities, the show up and teach us stuff, all that happened within this private Facebook group. And then after, of course, all of them were recorded. Each event was recorded. And then it was dropped into the events, or the units tab, I think is what it's called. And then after the event was over, there was a week. If you could not show up for the live event, or missed any one of the live pieces, of which there were several, and they were long. <laughs> and some people have it to work, right? You can't just ditch out of work because there's this awesome challenge you want to do. So you could go back after the fact and watch them, and then you had a week to go and catch up if you got behind, or you came late, or whatever. And the, at the end of that time, it actually went away. So something interesting happened between the participants in the challenge that the, the moderator or the person who put on the challenge d wasn't objecting to, which I thought was interesting. So these people were saying, hey, this challenge is going to be over in a week or 10 days or whatever it is. Let's start our own side group and talk about this topic. Not necessarily the whole topic, although some of them were around that, but the one piece of the topic. Let's go start a support group over here and learn from each other. And I thought, I wonder how the person doing this feels about it. But nothing was ever said. They just allowed us to go, or not me necessarily, but them to go make these groups, of which I did join a few. The powerful part of that is, yes, the private Facebook group went away, but I still have some of those connections that I made in just three days. We built some connections. We commented on each other's things. We, some cool things were happening from an engagement standpoint. And we were able to continue those on because we knew this group was going to go away. So we went to the side and we created a separate group so we could hang on to some of those relationships. Now, who knows where those will go, if those groups will thrive and continue to grow. Depends on who I think is moderating and leading them, how active they are, how active the participants are. But I thought that was not only a cool thing for us as participants, but what a cool thing for them to do when they put on the challenge to say, hey, let these people build relationships because we're not keeping this here because I don't want to manage this group long term. That's kind of freeing if you've ever tried to manage a Facebook group because it's a lot of work. So to be able to run a challenge and say, oops, in a week it's over and I've moved on, I've gotten them on my email list, I've sold them into my product, whatever the point for them was, and then they get to move on. Everybody wins. They had value, I had value, everyone had value, everybody wins. Okay, that's just my little story about something that happened to me and I think as you're thinking about a strategy for your challenge, potentially, be thinking about some of those things and what it means for the participant, not just for you. All right, let's move on. This is just a bonus that I'm going to run through with you really quickly before we run out of time. I want to talk about creating a challenge. You might be thinking, wow, this sounds super cool, Clara, but I don't have a clue how to do this. So let's talk about a strategy for your challenge to help things go smoothly. You know I'm a big strategy person. Let's talk about the pieces you're going to need to figure out while you're making a strategy. Think about your topic and the benefit for your participants right? Topic and benefit for your participants. Of course, benefit for, for you as well, right? Um, and then how they will participate. 
right? Are they going to be able to talk to each other? Uh, I encourage you to do it live. I've seen some that are, there's recordings actually. I think the engagement is less when you have a recording of the person and then you're expecting the other people to, the participants to just mingle. I don't think that is always as strong. That live factor I think is important. So you want to not miss that point. Okay, let's go back to our list for a second. Duration of the event. This is going to be important for people to know, hey, is this something I want to give up my time for? If it's going to be a 30-day event, you might lose me because I don't have that kind of time in my schedule. A three-day, a five-day, a seven-day. Mm -hmm. If it's interesting to me, I might participate. So make sure you've got that figured out in advance. How long is this going to be? Okay, and then the platform for delivery of your content. Like I said, I participated in several. There was some on Zoom, which I found to be a great atmosphere. You can see each other, you can chat in the chat box, you can put people in private breakouts and then bring them back. I thought it went very smoothly. It was a great temporary place. The downside is that we didn't have longevity there. Right, while it was super cool, while it was happening, if you didn't make connections there, which they didn't allow in the chat for you to give personal information, so it was on you to say, oh, that person looks like someone I need to know, and to go seek them out on social media to connect with them. I think that's a downside, but other people, that might work for them. So you might think about Facebook, the Facebook private group, of course. Even had somebody say a YouTube, private YouTube channel would work well for that. But just keep in mind that there again, you're pre-recording things, right? So you're not in there saying, oh, I see that question and answering questions as you go. Just something to think about. Okay, and then finally, and super important for you, is a call to action at the conclusion. So when you're planning your strategy, be sure that you know why you're doing this. What is the outcome that you'd like to have from this, right? <laughs> what is the point of doing this if you're not, you're not creating influence, building influence, but also they have a call to action at the end? Otherwise, they'll just leave going, oh, wow, I got my, my freebie, freebie, my time worth out of that, or... You know, a $20 challenge, a $50 challenge, whatever it is. Oh, I, I got my 50 bucks worth or my 20 bucks worth and move on. Have a clear call to action about the next step. People need to know what is my next step? What shall I do next? I think it's important for you to have pre-planned that in your strategy, what you're going to do. Because you have to set all those pieces up in advance so that everything functions when you're doing your challenge. Okay. Whew. So if you feel overwhelmed and feel like that was a lot, you can always go back and rewatch this, but let's do a quick recap of today's topic, the strategy of a challenge. First of all, creating visibility, super important, not just for you, but it also creates visibility for those in the group, those who are participants, inviting engagement, of course. So this engagement being engagement between you and the participant, but also engagement between the participants themselves. So they can get more exposure for themselves and meet people that are relevant to their journey, right? And then, of course, offering guidance. Be sure that they get something out of the deal, right? It's not about you entirely. There's a little bit about you, okay? I'm going to give you that much. But... When you're marketing specifically, you want to make sure that your marketing efforts, of course, are completely focused on them and the benefit that they'll receive, right? Because that's what's going to make them sign up. Otherwise, you might have a hard time getting people signed up into your challenge. Okay, so you might be saying, wow, Claire, that was great. I think I'm going to do a challenge. But what kind of a consultant would I be if I didn't end today's show and every show with my very own call to action? And just guess, just guess what today's call to action is going to be. Nothing? A three-day challenge. So I have a three-day challenge coming up. It's called Everything Matters. And I know that you've heard me talk about this before if you've been here on the show. Everything Matters is all about publishing. So join us if you want to learn everything that you need to know about publishing your book. 
So you can find the place to sign up to participate at authormatters.com. It's just a quick little sign up so you can get you in. You'll get an email saying, congratulations, you're in the challenge. And then watch for other emails as they roll in. It will be about the private Facebook group, the temporary private Facebook group where we will actually do the challenge. We'll also be emails about how you can participate, how you can get the most out of this event for yourself. And all of the reasons that you might be interested in writing your own book. Now, of course, we're always talking about it on Influence Matters on the show, right? Write, speak, lead. Write, speak, lead. Because that's how we grow and cultivate our influence. That's our, stra our strategy, right? That's strategic. So, one more time. If you are interested, if you think, I'm going to write a book, or I'd like to write a book, or I have written a book, but I don't know what to do next, then this challenge is for you. Because we're going to start with understanding the basics of getting published. So we're talking about um, self-publishing, vanity publishing, finding a publisher. How do you find a publisher? How do you get the attention of an agent, which you're going to have to have unless you can find a publisher who will take direct clients, not very many of them out there that take authors without an agent. So all of those pieces and moving parts, if you have an interest in finding out about those, this challenge is for you because we are going to, to walk through them in three days. I'm not going to keep you hostage all day, but in three days, we're going to walk through all of the pieces, everything that you need to know from start to finish about the publishing world. Of course, you know this is the, the niche that I live in, and I'd love to share more with you about it. You'll get a free guide that comes with it, so you can keep that forever once the Facebook group is gone, and of course, you're going to build some great relationships while you're there. <sighs> I'm super excited to do my very first challenge, and I hope that you join me. Go over to authormatters.com and get signed up today. It's happening in November. You'll see the dates on there. And once again, thank you so much for showing up every week, giving me your time and attention as we talk about ways that you, the Savvy Influence Builder, can strategically and intentionally cultivate your influence and generate more leads for your business, ministry, cause, or brand. Okay, that wraps up another episode. Thank you so much. I will see you next week, same time, same place, right back here at WeBeam TV. Have a great week.